Hey, what is up, awesome people? Shady Wags here, and I just want to give some definite answers to people on some of the most common questions I've been seeing asked about seven days to die. Now, bear with me. Some of this is about as exciting as a Jeopardy rerun on a Sunday afternoon, so I will attempt to make this interesting as possible. One of the main questions that I keep seeing coming up is how far can you mine down into the ground? I've got a pretty decent sized hole started here already for my fire bomb. So I'll pull out the auger and one little tip about the auger and the chainsaw, these things are loud as hell. Whenever you use them, go into your sound options and turn down the main volume. Okay, let's do some work. That is as far as you can go. I have hit bedrock and that is the bottom of the map. And you cannot mine through bedrock. Every time you hit it, you'll get a clanging noise. Exactly how far down did I mine? Well, I have 500 frames on me here. So let me frame my way back up to the surface. You can see it took 73 frames to get back to the top, so I ended up mining 73 blocks down. Next question, how high is the map? I still have a good amount of frames on me, so let's see how high I can get. That is the last frame I can put down. So from bedrock to the very top of the map, it was 251 blocks. If you go into creative mode, you can fly up a little higher, but you cannot place any more blocks. And what does a free fall from 178 blocks up look like? How large is the playable map? If I zoom out here, this is the exact size of the playable area of the map. The entire playable area is surrounded by the radioactive zone. And if at any point you cross over into that radioactive zone, you will quickly begin to start taking damage and die. You may have at some point in the game collected some hazmat gear even if you have that full set of hazmat gear equipped, you cannot cross over into the radioactive zone. That hazmat gear is in the game for future expansion. Can you dig under the radioactive zone? No. You can dig down to the bedrock, but once you cross over into that radioactive area, it is the same result, death. Can you fly over the radioactive zone? Surprisingly, yes you can. If you go into creative mode, you can fly over the radioactive zone and out of the map. Christopher Columbus was right, the world is flat. It is very strange over here. The temperature changes drastically, going from extreme heat to extreme cold. And you can see the world map is just floating out in a dark void. I know someone is going to ask this, can I build over here? Yes, you could build some type of overhang structure, but I'm not really sure why you'd want to do that. Unless maybe you're a huge Tim Burton fan and a solitary lifestyle surrounded by a lifeless, dark, gloomy backdrop is your idea of Nirvana. You sick emo kid. Now, after I made my way back across the radioactive zone, something very bizarre happened. My game just started acting strangely. I seemed to slow down despite trying to run or move. I felt like I was moving sluggish at half speed. 
the world looked differently now. It was darker, and the landscape looked strange. Trees in the sky, in the grass, everything just looked different now. I began losing control of my actions. I was just swinging wildly at objects for no reason. And I was hungry all the time. My hunger was dropping as quickly as I filled it. The only thing that seemed to control the hunger was eating raw meat. I'm not sure what was happening. Was this some kind of bug? I began to wander the map. And slowly, I lost track of exactly what was I doing. Why am I here? Where am I? Who am I? The only thing I could think of was my hunger, and it began to consume me. I lost track of time, or was it that I lost track, or I just really did not care about it anymore? It all ran together, morning, afternoon, night, morning, afternoon, night. It just didn't mean anything anymore. All I cared about was moving forward and finding more food. Until, while I was trying to catch my next meal, I stumbled into a town, and there were people here. They were strange to me, but oddly, I was drawn to them, and at first I was scared. I felt like they would attack me at any moment, but they didn't. They approached me, and they spoke. Hey, bro, cool shirt. Uh, thanks, bro. The name's Kyla. Welcome to the neighborhood. Support group is on Tuesdays. Euchre night is on Thursdays. I hope you like Yuka. Luckily, I'd found Carla and the other radioactive survivors. They taught me the ways of the land and how to survive. They became like family to me, and I felt like the first time in my life, I now had a purpose. We are constantly hunted, tortured, and threatened by the flesh runners. But with this newfound purpose, in my new family, I know we will survive this cruel world. Uh, Tony? This is my best friend Tony. No, he's not the smartest guy, but he's been a good friend, and I know he's got my back. And that means a lot in this world. Sometimes I have memories of a person, of a name, that sits on the end of my tongue. I'm not sure who this person is or why he is stuck in my brain, but maybe someday we will meet. Uh, Tony? I've got to go. Tony said they've located a flesh runner down by the information center. I sure hope we catch that bastard. It's been seven days since I last ate.